Good morning. Uh, my name is Whittier Henry, and I was one of the 19 high schoolers and adults who took, place, took part in the mission trip to Cuba last week. It is so wonderful to be back worshiping with you guys this morning. This time last week, we were in Cardenas, Cuba, worshiping with the Juan G. Hall faith community. Now, while we were there, we actually had the privilege of leading worship. I delivered a sermon in English, and Ada delivered a sermon in Spanish for them. They were far more receptive to Ada's sermon. <laughs> but while I was delivering this to a room of incredibly blank faces, I spoke of how I was hoping that just like in Ephesians, where people from far off and near took, part, took place together in shared faith experiences, that we that week could do the same with their community. And um, called it. It was truly incredible. I'll give you an example from our first night there. So we got off the plane and we were already greeted by the, uh, the Allison, the pastor, and his wife, Sarai, who were just so smiling and happy, which was nice. And we took our little three-hour bus ride out east of Havana to Cardenas. Now, it was probably around midnight when we got in, and we were expecting just to get a little shut-eye and be ready for the long week of work ahead, and especially because we'd worship the next morning. We were a little bit mistaken because when we walked in, we were greeted by about 20 different people, members of the community, including little children who were still up at midnight, to welcome us with smiles and with a song and with food. It was awesome. Instead of sleeping that night, I mean, we did eventually, but instead of sleeping that night, we got to eat and have time together with them and get to create these bonds immediately. It was so nice. And it only continued throughout the week. On Sunday, after worship, we had the absolute pleasure. We were kind of bored just for a second. We had a little bit of dead space. So we figured we're going to go play some soccer in the park. They had this little square in the town, which was really fun. When we, when we got there, we were just going to play some soccer, but we had invited the kids to join who were more than happy to, and they schooled us. It was great. <laughs> but even as we were doing that, more members of the community came and joined, and joined in the shared joy. It was awesome, and it only kept going. Throughout the week, when we were doing our painting of the sanctuary in a couple of the rooms you're going to hear about later, they would always be there to help. And when we got to take our breaks from our work, their work didn't stop. Their work of providing for us, feeding, feeding us, and just laughing with us did not stop. About three nights in, a Cuban jazz band came to play for us who were incredible. And one of the youth in their, in their little youth group came up and played on the clarinet. And it was amazing because as she started playing, a couple members of our group started noticing, hey, I'm pretty sure this is the tune to Can't Help Falling in Love by Elvis Presley. <laughs> so, as a youth group in the back, we all started going, but I can't. And it got to the point where every single person started joining in. And a little bit later, the Cuban jazz plan started playing a little more upbeat music. And Sarah, one of the, the pastor's wife, started getting up and dancing a little bit, and Will Palmer knew exactly what to do. He got our youth group and their youth group up and dancing with everybody till we had a night of shared joy that no language barrier could separate us from. Throughout the week, despite the fact that we both spoke very little of each other's language, it never stopped us. Moments of confusion were never moments of frustration, but moments of laughter. We all knew that no matter what, we would have each other. All right, now all that being said, we're having this great week. And though, because a lot of you have to eat lunch after this, I've been advised to not go into detail, but a couple of us, including me, got a little bit sick, which was unlucky. But even when we were sick, the love didn't stop. That morning, I remember every single kid from each community saying, how are you? And genuinely caring about the answer and what they could do to help. One of the doctors in the community, who was actually a mom of the local youth we had seen before, who might just be the sweetest lady I've ever met, came in and came to assist the entire time with a smile on her face and a joy. I, I learned one time that when your body's feeling bad, if you smile, you can make it better. So that night, as I was throwing up on the ground, I tried to keep <laughs> smiling the entire time, which must have been a really strange sight to the outside eye. But that was kind of how it was throughout the entire week no matter what hardships may have befallen us, no matter how, word the, how hard the work must, may have been, the smiles never stopped from anyone. And the bonds we got to create with people far off and near, people like Caleb, Ian, Delaney, Leah, 
Anna, Diana, those people, that we're going to remember them all our lives. And we hope that we can bring that shared joy back here because it was truly wonderful. Thank you. Hi there. My name is Will Palmer, and I had the pleasure of going to Cuba with our youth group. Um, throughout our stay in Cuba, we spent a large portion of our time working and painting the sanctuary of the Wanji Hall Church in Cardenas. Before one of our days of work on the church, a small group of us went on a short walk to the Cardenas neighborhood to collect scaffolding from a friend of the church. Throughout this walk, we walked by a small snack shop. And this snack shop had a few snacks, but one thing that stuck out to me was a bag of lollipops. I gradually learned that these kids in the Cardenas church had, gradually, had difficulty accessing small treats like lollipops that I myself take for granted in the United States. Later in the day, I decided to buy this bag to pass out to the kids. This bag was huge, so there were more than enough lollipops for every kid to have more than one. Let me remind you, most of these kids are around the ages of 13 and 14. Every single kid insisted that they only have one lollipop. I kept telling him, please take another, but every single one said, no, 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 I'm taking one. When I was their age, I would have taken that second lollipop in an instant. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've always felt material possessions would make me happy, despite saying that money can't buy happiness. I still believe that a new Nike t-shirt would truly make me happy. <laughs> These kids had so much stacked up against them, yet they seemed happier than almost anyone I've ever met. Their fulfillment and joy came through their community and their connected love for God. As the week went along, our youth and the Cuban youth grew a strong connection. This connection brought me in this love and fulfillment that these kids were experiencing. I truly felt fulfilled for, from the love of God and the love of my neighbors. I'm so happy to have this experience and to have learned about the Cuban culture and the people there. I hope that the memories and the lessons from this experience will stick with me for the rest of my life. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Megan Leeper, and I had the absolute pleasure over the last week of serving as one of five adult advisors to our students as they made the journey to Cardenas, Cuba. As an adult, it's easy to slip into the mindset that a mission trip like this one is largely about the work. As you prepare, you're focused on what projects you'll be doing, the supplies you'll need to bring, and the prep work and the planning that needs to be done. How many paintbrushes, drop cloths, rollers do we need? What types of easy to teach crafts will the Vacation Bible School students enjoy that don't require a thousand tiny bits and pieces? What are the logistics of transporting hundreds of adult diapers, sanitary products, vitamins, and other hard to come by medical essentials that we'll be donating to Cuba. I arrived at the airport ready for a week of doing. After all, that's the reason we're going, right? To lighten the physical and financial load of a church that otherwise would have to spend their own time and money on completing these projects. And that's something to feel good about. The group could walk away with knowledge that they'd spent the word week working hard, capture some lifelong memories, and expanded their worldview. Great, that's enough. That's what success looks like. All right, sign me up. But the moment that we arrived, something interesting happened. The advisor began learning from the students. And I found that this amazing group of people had so much to teach. Sure, I learned what the Visco app is, it's how the girls' pictures always look so much better than mine. <laughs> I learned how to use Riz in a sentence, though I'm not sure I completely understand. <laughs> but more importantly, 
I learned through their example that despite everything that I assumed going in, they weren't looking at this as the work. They were looking at this as an opportunity to foster the type of deep, meaningful relationships that have the power to change the world. They were there for something so much more than a set of projects. They were there as peacemakers. And it got me thinking, what about this particular group made them so well equipped to do exactly that? Here's what I discovered. This group is brave and resilient and open-minded. Despite a long day of international travel last Saturday, I watched this crew arrive at an unknown church in a new city that was very different from Davidson, North Carolina, in the dark, in the rain, and I watched them dig into the first of many, many meals full of food that was unfamiliar, fending off the flies that kept us company all week, and not only did I not hear even the tiniest grumble, but I watched as a small group of very tired students with Ada Hicks as their ringleader, immediately gravitate toward the members of, Cuban, of the Cuban youth group, jumping in to connect despite a language barrier, reaching out a hand in friendship, and set, setting the standard for a week of fellowship that was to follow. Over the next three days, I also discovered that this work has an unparalleled work ethic and sense of servanthood we had a lot of painting to do. Take a minute, look around this sanctuary. Look at the walls, look at the size of it. Now imagine that you personally may never have done a painting project. You've never taped, you've never scraped peeling paint, You've never edged, you've never cut in, you've never rolled, you've definitely never worked with water-based paint or oil-based paint cut with gasoline. Oh, 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 and it's 93 degrees, it's raining, and there's a blackout, so the fans aren't working. Now go paint. You imagine chaos. You're imagining complaints. You may be imagining that after an hour or two, there are three or four hard workers soldiering on while the rest of the crew chit chats. That has been my experience in the past. But you know what? Not these guys. I watched this group work morning and afternoon, day after day after day, despite the heat, despite sweating so hard that it looked like they'd all just jumped into a pool and they didn't quit. They worked harder than any other team I have ever led, bar none, and they worked tirelessly. At one point, I thought I was going to have to duct tape Ben O'Brien to a chair to get him to take any sort of meaningful break. <laughs> and they did it with laughter and singing and good-natured ribbing, and they got it all done. Not just the sanctuary, but two additional rooms used for community activities, fellowship, and ministry. Working alongside our partners in Cuba, they demonstrated a desire not just to serve, but to serve well and to serve cheerfully. I watched as congregation members floated in and out of the church throughout the week, eyes wide at the transformation that had occurred. I could not have been prouder. And finally, this group is so full of joy. Every evening we had a devotional, followed by time with small discussion groups that just dove a little deeper into the scriptures and meditation for the day. Our group liked to start with a check-in. How are you doing? What was something that we noticed? James Dula had a theme for the week. Where were people happy? Where were people laughing? Where were the shared experiences? Where was the fun? In short, James was looking for joy, and that struck me. To be peacemakers, this group discovered that you must find the joy in it. 
And let me tell you, there was no shortage of joy with this group. There was more laughter this week than you could ever imagine, even in the face of hardship, of obvious unfairness, of disparity, of long days, of worry. There were card games, there were dice games, there was dancing, there were sports, and there was music. Oh my gosh, there was music. As James pointed out, joy was everywhere you looked last week. And it was this group of young people and their counterparts in Cuba who brought it consistently. So the advisor comes away with a blessing of her own. And it's this, peacemaking is not only about what we can do to help, it's who we can be to help. The last line of my notes just says, speak from the heart, so I will. Charlie, Cooper Brake, Eli, Scotty, Cooper Bryan, James, Sarah, Greta, Jack, Whittier, Ada, Finn, Will, and Matthias. I told you in Cuba, and I will tell you here and now, in front of everybody, how proud I am of you. You guys will change the world. You're amazing. <laughs>